Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. I'm um, talking about WrestleManias, kind of sort of like greatest hits matches of over the time. Uh, the last three matches I've really talked about on here is uh, matches that, you know, really kind of like hidden gems that kind of really mean more uh, than what they meant at the time. Um, or maybe you would just look at them and, and, and kind of not know what the meaning of, of, of those matches. And historically over time, they, they become bigger. Um, this match right here, uh, honestly, is the year after the, the Bam Bam Bigelow versus Lawrence Taylor at WrestleMania 11. Uh, this, this would be the uh, Shawn Michaels Iron Man against Bret Hart at WrestleMania 12. D to me, honestly, as a kid, uh, the first time I watched this match, I, I remember watching it. I remember having fun watching it. Um, but, you know, the, the match goes an hour. It goes into overtime, um, you know, and they really kind of like make up the rules on the spot uh, because of the fact that uh, they want to make sure that at WrestleMania they have a winner. Um, so, you know, Brett's walking away and uh, he's called back into the ring uh, for them to go into sudden death overtime. Uh, you know, to me, honestly, that match... Uh, <laughs> There's not really moments in the match that you can look at and be like, I remember at this point, you know, this point, it, it you know, we almost had a pinfall, some sort of like a close thing. I don't know. To me, like, you've seen that match once. There's no really repeatness to it. I understand, like, in the world of comedy, you know, sometimes when you're talking about comics, um, you know, there's, there's comics, comics, like the, the ones that, like, a normal person watching it, you know, wouldn't think that they're the best comic out there. But, like, a person in the business who, who knows, you know, what they're doing really thinks that, you know, certain comics just kill. And, you know, they're, they're the best ones at the craft, even though they might not be the most famous one out there. That might be like a wrestler's wrestler's match that, you know, you're coming up in the business, finding a way to, to have a match go an hour and uh, have it make sense and have meaning. I, I, I'm not going to say that, you know, the match was boring. Because at the time, I watched it when I was a kid. You know, I was into it the whole time. You know, wondering what was going to happen next. Uh, to me, that first time I watched it, I didn't even really notice that, you know, there hadn't been a pinfall or a submission. I just was kind of just watching the clock, just wondering how this was going to, you know, play out. And who was going to be the champion at the end. You know, we had seen Brett and Sean in the ring. At different points of their career, we saw them when they were, uh, uh, you know, tag team uh, wrestlers in the Hart Foundation and the Rockers. We, you know, we saw them in the ring uh, when you know they were they were fighting over the Intercontinental Championship. We even saw them when Brett was WWE Champion and Brett was, you know, the I'm, I'm sorry, Brett was the World Champion and Sean was the Intercontinental Champion, where they were kind of on two different platforms, but you could tell that they were building up Sean to be something special. He just he just wasn't there yet. And, you know, this was uh, Sean's time to shine, and he had lost um, the WrestleMania before, um, and now this was like the, the Heartbait Kid. This was the uh, the Boyhood Dream Tour, I guess you could say, uh, with him, you know, going after the, the championship. Um, you know, it's, it's just the same shame as like, when this match is over, you know, Sean's, you know, kicking Brett out of the ring, you know, telling him to get out of his ring. This is his moment. Um, you know, Bret Hart at that time was the closest thing we had to Hulk Hogan in WWF. You know, he had been involved WrestleMania 9, 10, 11. No, 11. He, in the main event, we just talked about that. Um, but, you know, he, he had sort of, you know, been the guy. Um... And that was, you know, taking taking ownership and being the guy because Hulk wasn't around anymore. Hulk wasn't even on WrestleMania 10, and that was supposed to be like a landmark, uh, a moment for WWF being back in Madison Square Garden. Um, can cops be out today? Okay, we were writing tickets, but um, you know, to me, honestly, um, you know, they could put on a lot of like greatest hits matches of, of WWF. WWF WrestleMania history, um, but to me, it, it, it's almost like the match that you just had at AEW Revolution. You know, when we were, we're watching it, it, it was great. But I mean, how many people are really going to be picking up the AEW Revolution DVD 
um, to, to be watching, you know, Daniel Bryan and MJF go for an hour and seven minutes. That match is a little bit different because I believe it had seven, uh, you know, pinfall submissions uh, throughout the whole match. Um, you know, so seven, it, well, then again, they worked it into it. They don't really break the match because the MJF got those two um, in a row um, on, on Brian and Danielson in there in the ring. But, um, you know, it, that match is a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same. It goes into overtime. They're tied three to three. Um, it ends up going seven more minutes. And uh, MJF pulled it out. I, I just, you know, I don't think many people are going to be going back and watching that in, in, in the history of time. And some people, I think, even thought that the, the AEW Revolution buy rate might not have been as high because people love Brian Danielson. Uh, people hate MJF. It seemed to be a mixture of things, but just the Iron Man match itself just kind of turns people off because, especially in today's world, of like people talking about they can't even you know, hold their attention through a normal YouTube video that might be 10 minutes because of the fact that, you know, TikTok just kills you when you're just like, you're just flipping and scrolling, um, you know, watching, uh, you know, minute long videos, trying to keep your attention for that long. Um, I don't know. That's just the way it is. It's, it's not my favorite match. I'm not going to say that it's a bad match. Um, maybe it's what they needed at that time to be able to, um, you know, do the Anaheim Pond uh, and have a WrestleMania kind of pick itself up. Wrestle WrestleMania 11 is like hidden in the shadows. Uh, you got Diesel versus Sean. You got Bam Bam Bigelow uh, versus Lawrence Taylor. I'll tell you the truth. As a kid, I was fucking pumped for that match. I didn't know what a shoot was, but Royal Rumble when Bam Bam and Lawrence Taylor got into it, I thought it was real. I'll tell you that much. I thought the whole build to that match was like real. That Bam Bam got pissed that Lawrence Taylor was laughing at him. And Lawrence Taylor was coming and saying, hey, you want to shove me? I'll shove you right back. I thought that was great. I probably haven't watched that match since WrestleMania 11. Uh, <laughs> when I rented the uh, the VHS uh, from Blockbuster. Um, but uh, that match meant something to me. But you know, that met WrestleMania is not like in a monumental place. Uh, it's hidden in the shadows, I believe, in um, Hartford, Hartford, Connecticut, I think is where that one is. So, you know, them going out to the Anaheim Pond, the, the home of the Mighty Ducks, that meant something to me as a kid. Even as a kid, I was like, this is a destinational WrestleMania. People are going to want to travel to see this. People need to be calling up ordering those travel packages. Um, but um, I think, honestly, they go out there, they have a 30-minute match. Um and Sean gets the better of Brett somehow. Uh, I think uh, you know that works. I think that's good. I, I think it doesn't really play off to the uh, screw job finish that maybe Bret Hart would come to know. But I think he wanted that at the time so he could walk away. He took that time off. Wouldn't film the, the, the lonesome lonesome dove. We wouldn't see him come back to WWF until uh, Survivor Series where he wrestled against uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think that was like the first match that they had against each other, uh, which then led up more to their WrestleMania match the next year, WrestleMania 13, the submission match that got Stone Cold Steve Austin over to high heavens. But um, I don't know, WrestleMania 12, Iron Man, just not for me.